My name is Troy Dawson. I do work for Red Hat, but that has no bearing on this talk or my participation in the Apple. Uh, I am currently the Apple Steering Committee Chair, and this is the state of Apple. Some of the things, if you saw Matt's talk at the beginning, the state of Fedora, I have done some of the things similar to that because I like how he does things. In particularly, I like graphs and numbers, and he was gracious enough to let me uh, grab some from him. And although they don't necessarily have bearing on what we do in Apple, it's I'm going to share some with you guys. So first things first, uh, total numbers. As Matt said on Thursday, there is two different styles of number gathering. The first is unique IP addresses uh, getting uploads each day. And if we stack them all together, all the releases together, it looks like we're getting pretty close to 40 million Apple users. That's really cool and impressive. I like to look more at the breaking things out individually. This one is particularly fun to look at for, I like looking at the rail five and the, sorry, Apple five and the Apple six. If you look over here, the, Apple 5, when RHEL 5 was end of life, there's this distinct drop. And yeah, we still have people trying to get updates for Apple 5. But if we look at the yellow, which is Apple 6, and we look when Apple, when RHEL 6 was end of life, instead of a drop, we actually have a spike. We don't know why, but this is my opinion. I think a lot of people are going to be staying on Rail 6 or some variant, and they wanted to mirror everything as fast as possible before things went, went away. Just my opinion. If we look at uh, Apple 7 and Apple 8, they're both really nice, nice curves. Fun to look at those. If, if we were make, making money, that's the way things would, would want to go. So there's the new way of, of gathering information. I don't remember what Matt called it. I, I could say Brontosaurus Sapphire. <laughs> DNF better counting. OK, but it uses DNF. And because of that, we only have numbers for uh, Apple 8 and above, because Rail 8 and above is when DNF started being. But it gives, it is anonymized for people that are concerned, and it is opt outable. Um, but it does give some interesting information. So I started off with the names for the Arch 64. Uh, so again, this is just the Arch 64. As uh, you think CentOS Linux has the majority, Red Hat Enterprise Linux has a very big chunk of that. And then this is the cool thing. Rocky Linux has 18.5%. It hasn't been around very much. For Arch64, Rocky Linux is, is doing really good. Then we got, it's even beating out CentOS Stream. Uh, then we have Oracle, Linux, and Alma. Got this little bitty thing. Now, if we look at PowerPC 64, well, it's not too surprising. There's Red Hat Enterprise Linux is doing 90%, a little bit in CentOS, and a little bit in CentOS Stream. Anybody want to guess what S390X looks like? Yep. <laughs> if you can afford to own an S390X, uh, you can afford to do Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So here's the interesting one, which is the XA664, because that's where the majority of machines are. Uh, right now, and this isn't too surprising, CentOS Linux is doing 68, followed by Red Hat Enterprise, CentOS Stream. I sort of wish Oracle Linux was a little bit lower. 
Um, but here, Alma is beating Rocky Linux, 2% to 1.4, but uh, it's still ahead of it. And then Cloud Linux. I'm really curious what this is going to look like next year because CentOS Linux is still around. I'm betting CentOS Linux is only going to drop to 20 to 25% next year. Uh, if I'm if I'm giving this slide next year, that is my prediction. We'll see how close I am. Now, this is why x86 is so interesting versus everything else. All that red is x86. 98% uh, of the machines. We do have a, a decent chunk of Arch 64 and PowerPC. Um, but the S390X is so far off the graph, it doesn't even measure 1%. I'm going to get into this. And if those of you remember Matt's uh, talk, this is for H4. So these are for the old machines, machines that have been running for a long time. Now, if we look at the next slide, this is the age over time. Uh, I really like the consistency of this blue, which is the first week. If you remember Matt's talk, this are machines that are only around for one week. So this means that consistently we're getting, for Apple users, we're getting between 40 to 50% of just one week users, which means these machines are usually being uh, rotated very fast. There might be containers, they might be uh, CI, so they only spin up, do one test, and spin right back down and get thrown away. The other thing that's interesting is the two to four weeks or basically one month. This, I'm just guessing here, but in my mind, I picture uh, virtual machines or cloud machines that do a complete refresh once a month. So once a month, they wipe the machine clean spin up a new one and then we have our longer lasting machines uh, matt can correct me if i'm wrong but i believe this red is only coming in here around may because that's how long it took before we had 25 weeks of reporting with this new way of doing it if he doesn't correct me then then i'm right the feature landed in 84 or 83 oh okay Okay, so it's only been running at 8483. Okay. So enough about graphs. Uh, they're fun to look at, but they don't really, for Apple, we, we don't get money based on any of this. We don't get money. So, <laughs> oh, one, I did have one more graph. I forgot about that. Um, this one's also gonna be interesting to look at next year. Uh, I am one of the people that makes RHEL. So I am sort of flattered that the purple Red Hat Enterprise Linux has continued to grow. That's actually not a surprise. It's continued to grow over the lifetime of RHEL. So this is one of those graphs that will be fun to look at next year. Okay, what everybody was asking about. What is this? This is... I'm not going to say our new logo. This is our current iteration of our new logo. Apple has gone a long time with a logo that not only has been hidden, but people didn't know what it was. So we, we are working on a new logo. We're hoping that it doesn't take as long as Fedora's logo took. The, take Fedora's logo took. But... This is what we currently have. Hopefully within three or four months, maybe even by the end of the year, it'll do, do goods. People have said, hey, what is it? And let's be honest, it's an abstract. To me, I picture the red as rail, the top is fedora, and just sort of ratcheting things into there. But it, the fun thing you, in, in the slides at the end, we do have a link to the issue tracker that goes over this. This actually started out as the tail of a centaur. 
tilted on its side. <laughs> and then it went from there. It's amazing how things get changed. So moving on. Over the past year, we've had many things. This is, to me, a, a sort of a changing year for Apple. A lot of it is because of CentOS, CentOS Stream, the changes in CentOS. But one of the problems we were having this year was packages not getting into Apple 8. People were... You know, they, they're in RHEL Apple 7, but not in Apple 8, and we do not automatically just move things over. But there's such a large gap, five years between 7 and 8, that many of the packagers from Apple 7 didn't want to deal with 8. Either they moved on in a new job or something else. Because of that, we, the Apple Steering Committee, uh, started working on a way to do, I, I wrote it down so, so I wouldn't forget, and then I lost what I did. Inst anyway, we, we started Apple Packager SIG to help deal with that, so that when, if a package isn't, a maintainer isn't responding to the request to build it in Apple 8, that if the packager SIG wants to, it can take that package, go through the proper procedures, which those procedures are linked at the end of the slides, and eventually get that package built into Apple 8. And as a SIG, so not necessarily an individual maintain that package. This is on a package by package basis. This is not a SIG saying we're going to bring all the Apple 7 packages and all the tutorial packages into Apple 8. It is on a package-by-package package basis. And the main reason for this is for, I'll call them infrastructure packages. You know, you, you have a lot of people want to maintain their big package, but there's 20 little packages that need to get maintained, and a lot of these little packages were just sitting there. So anyway, the Apple Packager SIG has been formed to uh, address that issue. You, you don't have to be on the committee to join the SIG. Uh, you do have to request it. You can't just automatically get on it. But uh, if you're interested in maintaining some packages, that might be a good way to, to, to come in. Another big thing that came in was Apple Next. This is... Uh, Carl George's uh, thought, and and I appreciate all, a lot of the work he's done for that. There have been others that have done a lot of the work, but he's been spearheading this. Plain Apple is built off of regular RHEL packages. The RHEL 7 packages, it's RHEL 8 packages. They're not built off CentOS, they're not built off Scientific Linux, they're not, they are real RHEL packages. With CentOS Stream being upstream of RHEL, people were having issues that, hey, I want to run CentOS Stream, but I also would need Apple. And this library or that library has been updated in Stream, hasn't made it into RHEL, needs to get built. Apple Next is built off of CentOS Stream packages. It is not meant to be a complete Apple replacement. It is meant to be layered on top of. So if package foo needs to be rebuilt on stream, it can be, but you don't, and it will be layered on top of Apple. And one stream gets merged into the next one. So right now, CentOS Stream 8 uh, is waiting to, for the RHEL 8.5 release. When RHEL 8.5 release comes out, those packages that are currently in the in Apple Next 8 can go get rebuilt on Apple and they will be built on Apple 8.5. And then people can, can continue to use the Apple. Uh, Apple Next is, like I said, for rebuilding packages where library's gone up. Uh, you know, for example, KDE's had to be rebuilt because Qt was up, updated and uh, 
and you could use the KVE desktop. And, and that last made me lose my train of thought. Anyway, Apple, Apple Next is meant to be a layered thing. This is also open doors for the next slide. Apple 9, we are thinking about this. Uh, Realm 9 should be released in a year. That's the current timeline. And CentOS Stream 9 technically is out. It hasn't been widely advertised, but you can grab composes of it. It's not in beta yet, so it's really early. But having the Apple Next lays the foundation for us to have Apple 9 in a in a better fashion than we had than Apple 8 came out. We are planning on having Apple 9 Next or Apple Next 9. Both of them are proper to say. This will be built off of CentOS Stream 9. <clears throat> and we currently don't have an estimate. We are working on it. Our current hand wavy estimate is before the end of the year. It could be earlier. could be, hopefully it's not later, but it could be. Now, the transition from Apple Next 9 to regular Apple 9, I'm not going to spoil the things. Uh, Mohan has a talk right after this one. I'm going to... I'm going to let him do that. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil it. Go to go to Mohan's talk. Uh, but we have a proposal for what we're going to do for the transition from <clears throat> Apple Stream 9 to plain Apple 9. It, it should work, and, and it should make things smoother and quicker than uh, building the regular Apple 8. Now, this is another thing, Apple and Red Hat. I wrote this down and I'm going to read it specifically so I, because I have misquoted this and others have misquoted this. In the 2021 Red Hat Summit, Gunnar Hellickson, uh, a Red Hatter uh, in higher up, said, my hope is to make Apple a first class participant in the overall enterprise ecosystem. And following this, Mike McGrath said, you know, Apple is important. Now, what does that mean? First off, it does not mean that Red Hat is going to take over the Apple everything. It, they are not planning on changing the committee, doing anything like that. But there are a few things where they feel that they can help. Uh, one that I'm really crossing my fingers for is uh, somebody working on infrastructure full time. Currently, if we need anything done for infrastructure, it's the Fedora guys, the Fedora infrastructure guys in their spare time does a thing here, a thing there, and it causes a, a lot of delays just because we don't have somebody dedicated to it. Uh, I'm really hoping that, that they managed to give us a full-time, possibly two, <laughs> but I would be settled for one, full-time infrastructure people. The other thing is more, a lot of the other things are internal. One thing that I thought had happened, but is still in the works, when Red Hat pulls a package from Apple and actually into RHEL, in the past, they haven't told Apple anything. Uh, they might send an email to the package maintainer. It doesn't usually get very far. They have, they are changing their official workflow. Uh, you might have heard me say in meetings that it should have been changed. It turns out it hasn't been changed. They had other issues come up. But by the end of the year, they will change the workflow so that it'll open a bugzilla. Uh, it will check to make sure it is not downgrading from Apple, if that makes sense. Uh, there's, there's a couple things in place so that that transition, uh, a package going from Apple into RHEL will be smoother. Another transition that they are doing internally, 
And this leads me to my next slide. Missing devel packages. Oh, sorry for the little red. I can actually draw on here and <laughs> don't know why. Anyway, for those that don't know, Red Hat, when it builds a package from a source RPM, that source RPM might build several packages. I'm going to use Flatpak as an example. When Flatpak is built, there's a Flatpak binary and then the Flatpak devel package. This has uh, library headers, various things that are needed to for another package to build that uses the Flatpak libraries. So RHEL puts out the source. They're fine with putting out the source. But if they don't want to maintain a binary, they just send out the binary. And in this case, for Flatpak, they just send out the Flatpak binary and withheld the devel. It just sort of sits in their internal Koji thing, which is called brew. Now, in the past, the, the, the I'm going to call the Red Hat business unit, would say, you have to go through all these hoops, and the answer is probably going to be no to getting this package re, um, released. They have finally, again, this is part of the Apple is becoming a first-class participant. Uh, they finally changed that thing so that it is up to the package maintainer. Now, this change happened six months ago, uh, but they didn't tell us until about two months ago. So anyway, they thought they changed and did, did all those great things, but if nobody knows about it, it doesn't do much good. So because of that, we do have a new process and again, this is linked at the end of my slides. I, I verified that it, it has been documented. The new process is twofold, uh, a short term and a long term. I'm going to tell you the long term first because we are talking about it. The long term is to open a Bugzilla. If you opened one before six months ago or even four months ago, open one again, asking for the package to be put into uh, CRB. CRB is sort of code ready builder, but it's really those packages that Red Hat is releasing, but they're not going to support. So you ask for both rel eight and rel nine for the package to be put into to CRB, but do two other things. First, say this is the the fact that this package is missing affects Apple builds. Because remember, they're being friendly to Apple. If it's if you say it's affecting my Joe Blow whatever, they may or might not do anything. The second thing to add in that bug is what specific package. Uh, using Flatpak as an example, uh, Flatpak I for building the KDE desktop, KDE Plasma desktop, uh, I was not able to build Plasma Discover. It's used to install flat packs and packages graphically. So when I opened the Bugzilla, I said this package is affecting Apple. I am unable to build Plasma Discover. And then I explained how important Plasma Discover was to the Plasma desktop. In the case of Flatpak, the maintainer was overjoyed. He had been trying to get that devel package in. And when I put that Bugzilla in, he, he leaped on it. And he said, yay. Now, not all package maintainers are that way. Some of them have a legitimate reason why they do not want their devel packages in there. But those are few and fewer. I'm going to say about 20% out of the four that I have put in. Only one has said, uh, I would rather not. So if they if they would rather not, they have a reason for that. Please accept that. But the vast majority I have found are totally fine with it. So that's the long-term thing. Flatpak uh, is it's 
I put that in like two months ago. Uh, it's probably still got another month before it actually makes it into the release. So what to do in the short term? This is another thing that uh, the, the committee has worked through and we've, we have a procedure for making Apple packages that have just the develop package or just the missing package. You don't, you don't have to do a package review as long as you follow the steps. The, the most important thing is you start with the, the Red Hat spec file. Now, granted, you can grab it from CentOS, the CentOS stream, but you're not making your own spec file from the beginning. Because if you did, then you would need a package review. But if you start with the Red Hat spec file, you rename it. And our recommendation is you rename it package dash Apple. And using my example, I made flat pack dash Apple. You change the spec file just enough so that, you know, it, it my example, the flat pack built and it did all of its testing and all that. But then at the very end, I deleted everything that wasn't in the develop package. So you make that change. Uh, you can get an exemption and for the most part, you can get it in a day or two. Uh, it's got to work its way through Bodhi. So if you have some friends that can test it, uh, then that's great. So that is the short term uh, thing. So open the Bugzilla, make your own, I'm going to call them Apple packages. That's, that's as close as a term as anybody else's get. But when the package makes it into a rel eight or rel nine CRB, you need to retire your Apple package. So that is actually step three. Um, so that's, it for, for develop packages, if you do have more questions about that, be sure to put them in the question and answer. This is just a shameful plug. Uh, the very last talk in, in the nest is I'm giving a talk on KDE on Apple. So that's just a shameful plug. Questions and answers. Oh, I'm like right at, right at a half hour. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, at this point, I want to invite the Apple Steering Committee members to go ahead and join in. And here is here is the link to my presentation, because my presentation does have the links that I talked about before. They're smooge. So do I click on smooge? Hello, everybody. Hello. So first question, and well, people uh, go ahead and put things in Q&A because chat is harder. First question is, does the develop package explanation and way also apply to non develop packages? Extension ex example extensions of the software that real the simply not ship EC GCC. GCC NAT is not even not shipped. It is patched out of the spec file. So what would need to be done is somebody would need to create a, uh, a specific source RPM that compile GCC NAT and GCC ADA or whatever else is not. Um, yeah, and so that would have to have a a package review and things like that. You would have to have a package review. The package would have to also not, it would have to be sort of the opposite of the um, GCC uh, R spec RPM where uh, it would not copy in, G it wouldn't replace GCC and other things. Um, it's a Apart from that example, the answer is yes, as long as it's something that's built by the rail spec file that's just not shipped. Typically, yeah. that's devil packages, but there's a few others. Yeah, I do have one that Perl. 
that for some reason they they shipped the libraries, but they did not ship the binary. <laughs> I it's it's their choice. But uh, yes, so it doesn't have to be developed, but it does have to be built with that spec file. Because otherwise you're writing a new spec, it'll have to go through a package review. Okay, this one, Carl, you probably know this faster than I do. What is the best way to get a particular spec file for a package? Is this fed package or something else? Fed package would probably be the fastest. You could do fed package clone package name, and that'll clone down the Fedora package source. The Apple the uh, for, for the Apple for Apple packages, you'd have to check out like the Apple Seven or Apple Eight branch, or if there is a difference, uh, the Apple Eight next branch. Uh, the idea is that normally packagers would be able to keep the Apple the next branch in sync with the equivalent branch. If it does get ahead. It would only be slightly different until six months later when it can be merged back and compatible with the next version of RHEL. Yeah. Well, one of the things I was thinking of is uh, the reason I thought that was because I usually grab ours from CentOS uh, or CentOS Stream to for for doing the develop thing because doing the sure. Fedora, you don't necessarily want the Fedora; you want the the RHEL one. Oh yeah, right. I was I didn't realize this question. If this question was in the context of like devil packages like that, then yes, you'd need to look at the CentOS disk kit to get the rel spec file. If it was just a generic question about uh, like finding the spec file of a Fedora package you're looking to port to Apple or an existing Apple package, then the way I answered it was made more sense. Okay. And one other question is, I haven't run into the develop problem for my Apple packages. Do I need to worry or is this an advanced topic? If you haven't run into it, you don't need to worry. Uh, if you have ran into it, it, it has been a thorn in your side for the past year and a half to two years. Is anyone seeing, a, are they just seeing me or are they seeing a screen I'm trying to share? I'm just seeing you. Yeah, okay. I thought this wouldn't work. All right, let's try this again. So uh, one of the things that you were showing earlier was something similar to this, which is the count me stats for um, yeah. different releases. Uh, and you're, we, uh, we can break down eight quite well due to different things that uh, we, we find in eight. In seven, it's a lot harder, but we can sort of get an idea. Turns out CentOS is a good portion of the users, but it isn't all of them. A good many of the systems are either, uh, that are seven systems are either uh, derivatives of CentOS that remove some files or um, something like cPanel or something like that. Um, well, you know, with seven, there still was scientific clinics. Maybe that's it. Maybe there's so many uh, scientific so Linux machines. Could be, could be. <laughs> um, the sci there's uh, two files that uh, the Apple release looks for that says uh, what the distribution is that Yum can um, look at and send. And CentOS by default will send saying I'm CentOS. Huh. And um, uh, I think Scientific Linux shows up, as, on, which would show up under here, or would show up as Alt Arch. Uh, would, would you mind making that bigger? Uh, yeah. Right, that totally. That's as best I can do. Okay. So um, the little hops and dups you hear, that tells you how many desktops there are because that's the weekend. And you know who turns off computers during the weekend? Not servers. <laughs> um, desktops usually get turned off on the weekend. So the, um, every weekend we see a dip in the data. Uh -huh. um, this is a, to put them in perspective. Uh, here is, on the bottom rows, you see down here is the eights for all the stuff. The, Dark purple is CentOS Linux 8. Then comes CentOS Linux 7. 
and then the very top is every other CentOS Linux box or every other Linux 7 box. Hmm. Um, they have been growing quite a lot since uh, beginning of uh, July. Interesting. And that's all. I was going to send you that, but I sent it to uh, somebody else instead. It says. <laughs> So anyway, that was that was it. I just wanted to point that out because it was. We have so, a new question. Uh, Smooch, well, do you mind if I share out the? Uh, in case anyone else wants to play with that data, do you mind if I share out that that data analysis C CSV file? I believe it's public. Uh, this one that I I uh, did it from is not public. I'll have uh, to. Never mind then. Well, I have a chart too. If we can answer the Q and A question first, though. Um, well, this one's sort of long because it was the last part of my thing. If you don't mind, how do I get the dash develop into Apple when rel ships to the libs only? Uh, in summary, there's a short term and a long term. You should do them both. Uh, the links are in my presentation, but I will just put that in. Uh, no, that's stalled Apple requests. I always forget what the, what what we call those, but that's not stalled Apple request. Okay, why am I not? I thought I had this link just already up. Evidently, I don't. I'm going to have to go to my own talk and click on the link. Okay, this is a nasty link, just because it's so long. But I'm putting it in the. Well, that's not it. <laughs> Um, but it's part of the Apple FAQ. Uh, this is updated. So short term, make an Apple package that, that only has the devel and long term uh, request in Bugzilla for that package, specifically saying that it is for Apple and what package is failing to build. Uh, the reason that Red Hat has changed their mind within you know, the last six months and they're trying to be nice to Apple. and But that's also why you have to say it's Apple because uh, for Joe Blow down the street, maybe they won't be as nice, but for Apple, they're trying to be nice. All right. And, and if your package, if the develop package does get in there, don't forget to remove your Apple package. Okay. There's more questions. There aren't really, uh, there's not really good statistics on the number of contributors. Um, um, mainly because sometimes packages get put into Apple um, by, I would say that is a, f a lot less than there are Fedora contributors. That's all I can really say. I mean, it, there isn't, the system isn't set up in a way to <sighs> differentiate all the time who, who really is maintaining the package and how many of, sometimes a package is in there without a contributor and sometimes a pack most of the time as in like i may have put the package in there myself at the beginning and i forgot to take it out so the contributor it's the person who's um owning the pack it, it's hard to tell who owns a package anymore yeah you know when we nobody own owns the package we we maintain them yes i yeah. forgot we don't own packages <laughs> We maintain them. But, I yeah, forget how many of... people maintain, uh, but yes, it is a lot less than there are um, Fedora ma maintainers, uh, and that's. I, I mean, this is a volunteer organization. Yep. We definitely encourage encourage anyone that is a Fedora packager that wants to start getting involved in Apple. 
making their packages available for Apple, Apple to get involved, stop by our IRC channel on Libera, um, come up, come attend our, the Apple steering committee meeting. It's an open meeting. Anyone can attend. And there's those, there's always an open floor section to ask additional questions. We definitely would like to get as many people involved in that as possible. Matthew brought up a good point that we've got more Apple users, but fewer Apple contributors, which isn't really healthy. So, but we do have fewer packages. That's true. Um, I think not by 10%, but oh, I think there's like 40,000 Fedora packages and 8,000 Apple packages. Is that about right? So, so we do have fewer packages. But any other questions here? If we go too long, I might have to turn on happy. Oh, his battery's dead. Happy feet so he can do his little dance. Well, I think we are, I mean, we got eight minutes left. Um, all right. I wanted, I wanted to share one more graph. Uh, Matthew had asked a little while back about a graphic for the uh, with the DNF count me stuff uh, without CentOS, Linux, and RHEL squashing everything down where you couldn't see it. Oh, see okay. can share real quick. So I do have one question while you're doing that. What sure. is that thing behind you? It looks like a dog holding a coffee cup. <laughs> that is the this is fine dog. Oh, if you, you're probably familiar with the cartoon, uh, if with, you're not, if you go, yeah, if you go to yeah. this is fine dot dog, that's a real website, then you can. This is fine dog. <laughs> <laughs> they felt the need to announce that. Uh, all right, I think I'm sharing now. Uh, th this is some of the public data that I, I was able to find smooch pointing me at from data analysis.fedoraproject.org. There's some CSV files in there and uh, I've been, I'm not good at matplotlib graphs and data manipulation and stuff, but I've been tinkering with it and getting a little better. This is the overall count me stuff for, uh, this is not, this is all systems, not just the, uh, greater than a week old or two weeks old. Uh, mm -hmm. it doesn't, ch the overall trend line doesn't change a whole lot. It smooths out a little bit when you take out the less than a week old systems, but we can see that CentOS Linux is still by far the most popular followed by rel and then CentOS stream. And then. The other ones get pretty far squished down. I did do another chart that takes out those top two. So you can see a little bit more the uh, the growth of the various different uh, distributions in the rail family, which is exciting to see. So is that orange Springdale or Oracle? The, the, the second, bottom orange the second is Springdale. Down. The uh, second orange is Springdale. Yeah, the bottom one is going to be Springdale. Springdale oh, okay. averages 60 systems a week. <laughs> These are in order with the, uh, I did make them in order with the legend. So that is the order that they are stacked in. I I, I, I leave it in there as noise for my, when I was doing stuff, I left it in as the bottom noise. There are other distributions that show up, but none of them beat Springdale. Uh, Springdale so um, once you've beaten Springdale, then you, you I, I started graphing various things themselves. Uh, so, okay. But, uh, Springdale Linux is uh, was originally done by Princeton University of I think Physics Department as a different distribution, and then they renamed it as Springdale several years ago. It, it's it's a lesser known uh, scientific uh, oriented. Uh, yeah, I'm. Well, you, you tell them the others. I was gonna say, yeah, I'm. I'm familiar with it. When I was doing scientific Linux, we, we, talked with them some. But. Uh, but so Springdale Linux is your is your baseline. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Who does vir virtu virtuoso Linux? I that one's um, new to me. Virtuoso is. Uh, it's another cloud Linux. Um, Actually, I think I labeled that one wrong. That is, I think what it's called is VZ Linux by Virtuoso. I think Virtuoso yeah. is the company. Uh, I think I screwed that name up. Yeah. I'll need to fix that. 
Uh, I haven't heard of VZ either. I think they started as like a um, an alternate uh, container VM type technology. Um, I don't really know much about them, but except for now they're advertising VZ Linux as a new rel rebuild. Well, good for them. I I like watching the Clone Wars. Um, <laughs> From the Apple perspective, we we absolutely enjoy it because the more the the bigger the rail family, the bigger the pie, the bigger the more we all benefit, the, and the more potential contributors that we can have in the into a stream, making rail better and thus making all of the rebuilds better, and everyone benefits from the packages that we have in Apple and can contribute there. Yeah, the the first Clone Wars, I you know I was a major part of that, and this one's totally different so and yet the same <laughs> <laughs> the more things change the more they stay the same yep i'm curious which ones will will come out on top well uh i'm totally fine with ending things early if people are okay with that yep, we don't have any more in the chat or Q, Q and A. Thank you for attending. And uh, again, Mohan has a talk right after this, talking about how uh, our, our, our proposal to do uh, faster Apple Next Nine to Apple Nine. And I'll be there too. See that. And after that, uh, some good-looking guy is going to be talking about Apple and KDE. Cool. Well, it was good to see you guys. I hope good you all have you. a good week. And I'm going off to go deal with some house stuff. Have a good okay. day. All right. Bye.